Call to order the meeting of the Common Council for Tuesday, August 20th, 2019. Roll call. Clerk. Ten are present, Your Honor, and Alder Vanderleest um, is excused. We have a quorum and we'll proceed. Pledge of Allegiance. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We will now recognize Alder Stevens for the invocation. We can have a seat while the Alder reads uh, his piece of this. Mayor, thank you. Because of your decision, this has allowed Alders to do the invocation themselves or they can reach out into our community inviting a person or organization to our common council meetings. For tonight's invocation, I chose to invite within our community. Oneida Nation is originally from upstate New York. After the Revolutionary War, their tribe began to relocate to Wisconsin. <clears throat> In 1838, Oneida established the Oneida Indian Reservation along Duck Creek. For nearly 200 years, they have lived here and has become part of our community. It is with great pleasure to introduce Oneida Nation's Chairman Hill. Chairman Hill. So, okay. so, Chairman Hill is a veteran to the Oneida business community, having served two terms as a council member. In 2017, Mr. Hill became Oneida Chairman. Chairman Hill is active in the United community and recognizes the challenges they face as a nation and is prepared to have those difficult conversations. He works with tribal members, surrounding communities, and nationally to ensure Oneida is successful in its future endeavors. On his leisure days, Chairman Hill likes to spend time hunting and fishing. He also encourages his family to be active and engaged in, a, in the community. Oneida Nation has a good mind, a good heart, and a strong fire. At this time, I would like to invite Chairman Hill to our podium. Thank you. Please rise for Chairman Hill's invocation. Okay. I would just like to thank um, Alderman for the gracious invite. And it is my honor to be here this evening to provide an invocation. I will be providing the invocation in my uh, Oneida language, and then afterwards I'll do a, a, a brief summary of uh, what was said in, in Oneida language. So I'll go ahead and start. Dauna gonjokwa asurhunsioste ginate ohundu ganehila dunksla. Aguego oskaji adwahwe nuni and guahnigula daitinoe ladu ne nyunki nuha ohunjage. G sego inadliwan diero hari datu and duhaki and guahnigo. Aguego oskaji adwahwe nuni and guahnigula daitinoe ladu ne ohnekanos hogu. G sego inadliwan diero hari datu and duhaki and guahnigo. Aguego oskaji adwahwe nuni and guahnigula daitinoe ladu ne onegli suha. G sego inadliwan diero hari datu and duhaki and guahnigo. Aguego skaji adwahwe nuni and guahnigula daitinoe ladu nain awahit g sego inadliwan diero hari datu and duhaki and guahnigo. Aguego skaji adwahwe nuni and guahnigula daitinoe ladu nain oyunkwa um g sego inadliwan diero hari datu and duhaki and guahnigo. Aguego skaji adwahwe nuni and guahnigula daitinoe ladu nain oyunkwa um g sego inadliwan diero hari datu and duhaki and guahnigo. Aguego skaji adwahwe nuni and guahnigula daitinoe ladu nain asanatengunda hundele, g sego inadliwan diro hari datu and duhaki and guahnigo. Aguego skaji adwahwe nuni and guahnigula daitinoe ladu nain galunda suha, g sego inadliwan diro hari datu and duhaki and guahnigo. Aguego skaji adwahwe nuni and guahnigula daitinoe ladu nain gundilio suha, g sego inadliwan diro hari datu and duhaki and guahnigo. Aguego skaji adwahwe nuni and guahnigula daitinoe ladu nain gunji, g sego inadliwan diro hari datu and duhaki and guahnigo. Aguego skaji adwahwe nuni and guahnigula daitinoe ladu nain gunjokwa, g sego inadliwan diro hari datu and duhaki and guahnigo. Aguego skaji adwahwe nuni and guahnigula daitinoe ladu nain ojita suha, g sego inadliwan diro hari datu and duhaki and guahnigo. Aguego skaji adwahwe nuni and guahnigula daitinoe ladu nain awela suha, g sego inadliwan diro hari datu and duhaki and guahnigo. 
Aguegos gaji at Wahwe Nuni and Gua Nigula Daitin we ladu. Nen Ladis Agayontese, G. Sego in Adliwan Diero Haridato in Duhak in Gua Nigol. Aguegos gaji at Wahwe Nuni and Gua Nigula Daitin we ladu. Nen Yodahal Sunqua Jiha, G. Sego in Adliwan Diero Haridato in Duhak in Gua Nigol. Aguegos gaji at Wahwe Nuni and Gua Nigula Daitin we ladu. Nen yunki sota hue nidale, g sego yunki nigula dari, datu yun duha kin guat nigol. Aguegos kaji adwahe nuni and guat nigula dai tinoe ladu, nen yoji stokwalu, g sego in adiwan dir hari, datu yun duha kin guat nigol. Aguegos kaji adwahe nuni and guat nigula dai tinoe ladu, nen gae nyungwe dage, g sego in adiwan dir hari, datu yun duha kin guat nigol. Aguegos kaji adwahe nuni and guat nigula dai tinoe ladu. Nen scanadalio, g sego in adliwan diero hari datu in duha kin guat nigol. Aguegos kaji adwahe nuni and guat nigula dai tinoe ladu. Nen sunquai disu, g sego in adliwan diero hari datu in duha kin guat nigol. Dane. So you can all be seated. Thank you. So I guess uh, I, uh, the real brief explanation is uh, it's a real repetitive. This is probably one of our shorter versions of the Ganehela Dungsla, our Thanksgiving address. This is the one that we teach in our, our school system to our, our students. And it um, was a much more briefer one than that, but I prefer this middle-sized one. <laughs> um, so real basically, um, I start off by giving thanks to uh, Mother Earth uh, for that she's still carrying out her responsibilities that were given to her upon creation. And then I, and then, and then I go on to the, the water and to the different plants, the three sisters, which are the corn, beans, and squash, uh, to the trees, to the tobacco, to the strawberry. Uh, that's uh, important medicine in, in our, in our, um, for our people. And then um, to the trees, and I go to the animal life, uh, to the people, to the fish. Then I kind of go into what we refer to as the kind of the greater forces. So we talk about the, 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 the wind, the thunders, the sun, the moon, the stars, uh, the four messengers, uh, one of our prophets, Skana de Leo, then ultimately ending with Sunku Aidisu, the, the creator. And so t to me, it serves as a, as a reminder every time I can have the opportunity to recite it um, that we're all connected, not only just as human beings, but also all of creation. You know, it's our responsibilities to um, be stewards of this, this earth and all the things upon it. It's not, um, so we need to make sure we're not just taking care of our, our human lives but also the, the plant lives and those animal lives and the natural um, elements out there. So that, that's how, you know, basically what I use it for is just that reminder to, and to be thankful, you know, every single day that we're able to hear, have here tonight, have the, the Green Bay Common Council meeting, uh, that we're healthy enough to be here and to participate and that, you know, we have um, health in our families. And so, you know, these are all things that, you know, we can be grateful for every single day. And I think that's a, a great part of, you know, of being human beings is being grateful every single day for the things that we have. Um, there are people less fortunate than us, and so we pray for them as well. So again, I would thank you all for the opportunity to address the Green Bay Common Council this evening, and I hope you uh, have a nice meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks so much for being here, Chairman Hill. I'll take a quick picture with Alder Stevens here. Thank you again, Chairman. On to item D here, approval of the minutes. I'll entertain a motion to approve the minutes. Second. Motion made by Alder from the third, second by Alder from the seventh. Are there any corrections that need to be made? Seeing no request, all in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? The ayes have it, the minutes have been approved. On the item E, approval of the agenda. Move, moved by Alder from the seventh, seconded by Alder from the tenth. Any changes you'd like to make? Seeing no requests, all in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed? The ayes have it. The agenda before you has been approved. Item F, report of the mayor. Um, so just a, a couple things here. Um, I think it was well-timed. 
by Alder Stevens to invite Chairman Hill to provide the invocation tonight. I wanted to announce to you all and to the public um, that we will be having our first meeting um, between the administration here in the city of Green Bay and the Oneida Nation. So that'll be coming up on, on this Thursday, this afternoon, the, the, af the afternoon of this Thursday. Um, really looking forward to that discussion. The hope is to, as I've said, um, you know, going back a few months here and even before that, uh, I think we are absolutely in need of uh, a functional relationship between the city of Green Bay and the United Nation, um, what is, one that is mutually beneficial for our residents and one that recognizes uh, the strengths of both entities. Um, so looking forward to engaging in that discussion uh, starting on Thursday. And, and uh, as I've also said, you know, I'm really interested in um, and respecting the role that the council has to play in this process and we'll be um, checking in with you regularly um, to keep you updated on on how that conversation is going. Um, also just wanted to uh, note that September is coming up which of course as you all know means move with the mayor. Um, so this is something that's been going on since 2015 in the city of Green Bay. Happy to continue that tradition. Um, this is initiative an initiative that is uh, nationwide, a lot of mayors across the country participate in, something that's put on by the National Forum for Heart Disease and Stroke Prevention. And um, so we're going to be putting those um, particular events up on the calendar for September, so it would in invite alders to participate and, of course, members of the public as well. So looking forward to that. So that concludes the report. On to item G, announcements. Any announcements? Alder from the ninth. Thank you, Mayor. I uh, would just like to take a moment to congratulate TWG. Uh, as many of you know, they um, are constructing a 107 units, uh, the Broadway lofts, and their groundbreaking occurred today. Uh, I know uh, Mayor was there as well as several city staff. Alder Scannell, uh, this is technically his district, um, but uh, but I just wanted to take an opportunity again to congratulate them on their groundbreaking, uh, what will hopefully be one of uh, maybe many other future projects. Thanks, Alder. Alder from the sixth. Yes, um, I, I want you to all look at your email because you got an email for an invite for the Clean Bay Backers uh, boat tour up the up and down the river. It's uh, on September 9th at 1 p.m. Please look at your emails and respond. This is a really good uh, tour. It's going to talk about several issues that we are working on, the areas of concern with the DNR, and uh, very informative. Thank you. I will be there. Thanks, Alder. Yeah. Alder from the 7th. Thank you, Your Honor. Just three <coughs> announcements. Uh, a lot going on. We've got uh, this weekend, <coughs> excuse me, Friday, uh, August 23rd through Sunday, August 25th is... Art Street, it's back, the largest outdoor fine arts festival in Wisconsin. It'll include close to 200 fine artists, local cultural organizations, demonstrating artists, children's art area, food vendors, and not one, but two music stages and dance. Uh, then if you're down here, you might as well stick around on Saturday and bring your bike with you. Uh, Saturday, uh, August 24th, from 8.30 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. is the uh, Fat Tire Tour of Green Bay. Every day, uh, by, uh, bikes, brews, and a casual paced tour of the city beginning and ending at Ned Kelly's Pub, right on Washington Street. Designed for riders of all abilities and on any kind of bike. And then lastly, Pomp's Auto Truck and Motorcycle Show. Right on Main Street here, Sunday, August 25th, 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. Come see a variety of our area's most beautiful vehicles. New, old, and restored. Vote on the People's Choice Awards. Spectators admitted free. Uh, registration cost for show vehicles is $10. Registration begins at 9.30 a.m. All makes and models welcome. There will be door prizes, food, and refreshments available for purchase. Uh, <coughs> People's Choice Awards trophies will be given for first, second, and third place. And all proceeds benefit the United Way. Thank you. Thanks, Alder. Alder from the 10th. Oh, thank you, Your Honor. Uh, I just wanted to, for us to remember Melinda Roberts. You might have remembered Melinda. She was a reporter for the Press Times. Um, she passed last July 12th. And very much in the history, 
she did a report or a book on all of the historic markers in the state of Wisconsin. Just very uh, great lady, and I just wanted us to all remember her. I'd also like to do a little shout out for my father-in-law who passed about a month ago, Steve Hitchcock. And uh, 95 years old, uh, he was trained as a Hellcat pilot in World War II. He worked as an engineer on the Cuban National R Railroad before Castro came to power. And he uh, worked on the big boy train, you know, the biggest ever made. Great guy, father of five, and uh, did a lot of reading with him. And I just want to shout out for any, anybody who's going through loss of a parent. We've lost all four of our parents in the last four years, and it's been hard. We all go through things, and I just want us to think about that as we move on. Thank you. Sorry for your losses, Alder. Thanks for sharing. Any further announcements? All right, we are on to item H, appointments. We have a motion. So motion by Alder from the third, seconded by Alder from the seventh to confirm the new appointments. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. The ayes have it, and that item has been approved. We're now on to reappointments. Motion by Alder from the 7th, seconded by Alder from the 6th to confirm the reappointments. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. The ayes have it, and they have been approved. Now on to public hearings. We have two items for public hearings. The first one is resolution authorizing amended conditional use at 411 St. John Street, and the second one is resolution authorizing conditional use approval at 2709 Nicolay Drive. Is there anyone here who would like to speak to any of these items? Anyone here who would like to speak to these items? Is there anyone here who would like to speak to these items? Clerk, please let the record reflect that no one appeared to speak to this to these items. <clears throat> On item J, ordinances, second reading for adoption. Okay. Motion was made by Alder from the seventh, seconded by Alder from the first to suspend the rules to take up this item with Oh, well, there's only one item. Apologies. <laughs> so there's been a motion made to approve, seconded by Alder from the first. We've got to use the board on this. This is 11 0. On to item K, report of the Redevelopment Authority, August 13, 2019. Motion made by Alder from the first, seconded by Alder from the fourth, to approve report K, which is the report of the Redevelopment Authority from the meeting on August 13th, 2019. Any items under this report you wish to handle separately? Hearing none, all in favor of approving that report, please signify by saying aye. aye. Those opposed, nay. The ayes have it, the report has been approved. Report L, item L, report of the Park Committee, August 14, 2019. So moved. Motion made by Alder from the third. Seconded by Alder from the fifth to approve report L, which is the report of the Parks Committee from the meeting on August 14, 2019. Any items under this report you wish to handle separately? Number two. Any other items? Item two will be handled separately. Hearing no others, all in favor of approving the remainder of that report, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, nay. The ayes have it, and the report has been approved with the exception of item two. What are your wishes regarding this item? Motion made by Alder from the seventh, seconded by Alder from the fourth to approve. The item was pulled by Alder from the tenth. You have the floor. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, <clears throat> there was a motion made at Park committee uh, with pickleball in mind and I would like to amend that 
to read, to allow the pickleball group to begin a $25,000 fundraising campaign to install pickleball courts at Murphy Park and to bring back the request to fund the remaining $225,000 for this project in the 2021 bond request. Yeah. Motion made by Alder from the 10th, seconded by Alder from the 3rd to amend the item. Any further discussion? Alder from the 10th? No. Alder from the 12th. Alder from the 10th. Right. No, I, I had discussions with uh, Director Ditchett on this, and we had requested to put this in the bond request for this year, but we decided, you know, council decided or to move that for next year. So we, we would like this group to go out and raise monies or get pledges, but we don't have any guarantee that it'll, it'll make the bond request next year. So this is the request we made. Pledges could be made. If it doesn't go through and go through the bond request next year, well, say la vie. So this is just more or less giving this group the right to go out and collect pledges. Does that help? Yeah. Alder from the 12th. So, thank you, Mayor. I'm in favor of the, the motion. I just have to clarify. Whenever we direct groups to fundraise, you know, is, are we giving the false impression that the city endorses the project? Basically, they'd be using the city's name in fundraising. This came up with Colburn Park and a few other projects in the past, and I just, I would, uh, maybe if you refer to staff, I don't know if the language and the motion is correct, the, the right intent, but I guess a, an opinion from the parks director if the motion would, we, we would prevent that. Uh, Alder from the 10th. I'm sorry. I, I talked to the director, uh, Ditchite, about this, and we had three different motions, and this is the one that he preferred. I was deferring to the park director on this, and he felt that this would be the route to go. So I deferred to him on that. Uh, granted, you know, I mean, um, I think that the pickleball group is aware that, you know, they're, it may not go through. So I think they realize that. So we're not going to go out and say, well, the city better do it or else. We're not, we're not doing that. We're just, it's the potential to show that there's a commitment to bring something like this forward, and I really think that this is a good route to go. Uh, if it doesn't work out, so be it. But uh, we will not disparage the city in any way. I don't know. Alder, did you want Director Ditchite to wrap? Yeah, Director Ditchite. Yeah, so we have two options here. One is to begin a fundraising uh, effort right now and allow that to happen and then bring the request forward next year in the bond request. Um, the other option would be to hold for a year on the fundraising effort and secure the funding first, uh, which could either be added to the, the bond request for 2020 or talk about it for 2021. Um, so those are really our two options. And I know the fundraising group, uh, I met with Alder Stoyer and the fundraiser, and really he, he would like to really push forward on the fundraising right now uh, because he feels he would be successful at it uh, currently with the interest that's out there. Alder from the 12th. Thank you. Um, I want to be clear, though, that, that we're accepting, this group will accept pledges, which are different than actual monetary donations. So pledges, yes. as long as that is very clear that, that we're not you know, tied up with accepting monetary donations at this point. OK, I'm fine. Thank you. Any other requests to speak? Seeing no other requests to speak, all in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. The ayes have it, the item's been approved. On to item M, report of the Finance Committee, August 13, 2019. Motion made by Alder from the 6th. Second. Seconded by Alder from the 7th to approve report M, which is the report of the Finance Committee from the meeting on August 13, 2019. Any items under this report you wish to handle separately? Any items? Hearing none, all in favor of approving that report, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, nay. The ayes have it, the report has been approved. On to item N, report of the Improvement and Services Committee, August 14, 2019. Motion made by Alder from the 7th, seconded by Alder from the 8th to approve report N, which is the report of the Improvement and Services Committee from the meeting on August 14, 2019. Any items under this report you wish to handle separately? 
Item two. Any others? Item two will be handled separately. Hearing none others, all in favor of approving the remainder of that report, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, nay. The ayes have it. The report has been approved with the exception of item two. What are your wishes regarding item two? Second. A motion made by Alder from the seventh, seconded by Alder from the first. This item has been pulled by the Alder from the ninth. You have the floor. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, we talked about this issue um, at length uh, at uh, INS meeting, and I think that there was some disagreement between the Alders, even though that we ultimately ended up with the majority to move it forward here. But I know that um, the, uh, the person here, uh, and I, I apologize, I'm probably not going to pronounce the name correctly, but uh, Gia Mua um, is here to speak, so I'd like to move to open the, the floor to interested parties. Motion made to open the floor by Alder from the ninth, seconded by Alder from the third. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. The floor is open. Thank you, ma'am. Please uh, state your name and address. Yes. Zia Moa, Zoma Holmes, address 2542, Van Wright Court, Village of Bellevue, Grim Bay, 54311. Thank you, I appreciate the time. I would like to make these for the records. I made 15 copies. I would like to make this for the record and pass it out all to you, is that okay? And it's Z, like a Z, but spelled with an X, like xylophone. So Z is fine. A lot of people call me Z. I'm fine with that. While she's passing that out, I'm going to start. Um, I want to say that I'm proud to say that I'm a home builder and a realtor in the city of Green Bay since 2000. So I uh, close to 20 years now, but combined experience of real estate experience in the area 20 plus years. So first of all, thank you all city council members, elder persons, Mr. Mayor, for giving me this opportunity to speak. I will be the first one to admit that as a law-abiding citizen, I've never set room, uh, foot on this room before or any other city official committee meeting before until last Wednesday and tonight. So it's been a quite eye-opener for me and quite an experience, so please bear with me, hear me out, and all will fall together at the end like a puzzle. So thank you in advance for giving me this time. I'm here tonight to request that the, the uh, council consider rescinding both of these fines based on the following facts. These two properties are vacant lots, unimproved lots. I took ownership in November 9th, 2018, last fall with the intent to build and improve them much of this year. So I just had it set in my mind with the intent to build in my mind. However, due to the late winter and all the storm rain, we had major delays. June 7th, 2019, I received city's letter postmarked June 6th, 2019. However, handwritten and I reiterate handwritten date of May 29th, postmarked June 7th. I noticed the discrepancy and contacted Dan, the city staff who signed the letter, immediately as proof from my phone logs. I pointed out that technically I have from June 6th, postmarked date, seven days, which would be June 13th. However, being that I was on vacation in Florida, I will still have it done by no later than June 11th as an oversight and not intentional. Dan agreed on June 11th date and would communicate to the appropriate department not to go out and cut the grass. Monday night, June 10th, I met with my lawn guy out there and surprise, lawns were already cut. One week later, I received the two invoices. After multiple attempts to reach and finally converse with Chris, city staff, we clearly disagree on what communication actually took place despite proof from my phone log um, as proof of communications, 
letters, postmarked envelopes. It's not about the phone calls exchange that we disagree, but more importantly, it's about what the Wisconsin statute dictates. Statute mandates that city mail out notices, which in this case was mailed on June 6th. Seven days from the 6th is June 13th as the deadline. However, city went and cut the grass on June 10th. The discussion that city have no control over post office's mailing date or as to when secretary actually put the letter in mail and that the city is acting, operating on presumed handwritten letter dated May 29th is not and should not be on me as the owners. That is on the city. I too have no control over the post office delivery date or the in-office miscommunication oversight as in this case. There's room for errors in these areas, but however, the postmark date is the only controlled factor here. In addition to these facts, members of the council and Mr. Mayor, I'm requesting that you consider rescinding these invoices as I felt that I was treated unfairly and condescendingly last Wednesday at the INS uh, meeting by one alderman to a point where treatment, that treatment, his conduct prevented me from fully expressing my concerns. Please put yourself in my position, in my shoes, where as a law-abiding citizen, I've never been to any of these meetings and expected that the situation would be resolved and handled professionally since I'll be in front of city government, which belongs to our citizens. It was total opposite from what I expected. It was a major disappointment for me with my city government. Due to how one Mr. Elderman conducted himself last Wednesday night, I felt condescended, intimidated, humiliated, disrespected, demeaned, embarrassed, since I expected nothing more than professionalism. He created, painted an impression as if I'm a slum and irresponsible is his exact word, citizen, that I purposely neglected my property. Just presume me to be this irresponsible citizen that I'm sure he comes across daily in his position when it actually he knows nothing about my high character professionally and personally as attested by some of your city officials and city staffs and many others who know me but yet still presumed and categorized. I have confidence that my city government will not want to create an adversary impression with such mannerism where citizens are intimidated from coming to voice their opinion on the city's oversight. Citizens should be free to express their concerns without having to feel humiliated, degraded, condensated, intimidated as the government belongs to the to a citizen. We city government officials, we can communicate our points to our citizens without being condescending to anyone, no matter from which walk of life they're from. Verbal attacks has no place with city government, but perhaps soften our approach will gain more respect, more trust in government, creating a win-win situation. I have confidence that my city government, with all of you sitting here, will not support and discourage from such demeaning, humiliating conduct as such. Therefore, Mr. Mayor and all council people, I am here not just to request rescinding these two invoices based on the mentioned fact, but as well as to clear my name, clear my name. As Mr. Alderman had created the impression for me, one Alderman questioned me that night if there were prior history of we negligence, please note for the record to clear my name. Long weed anywhere is not my standard, as proven by my long standing history, professionally and personally. No prior weed negligence on any, on this property or any other properties that I have built in the city of Green Bay, as provided to you all addresses that I can remember I've built in the city. And these properties are only the ones that I've either built or remodeled in existing established neighborhood. 
They don't even include the new constructions and new subdivisions. So not in Green Bay, not in surrounding cities and town where I've built, not with my personal home, no previous records of weed negligence with any of my new construction sites, lots, or my personal home. However, what I do have as a history is that I have brought values to city neighborhoods where no builders, no citizens want to touch these vacant lots sitting in established neighborhoods, but I do as in these Pine Tree and Burns Avenue lots. By building beautiful new homes to these established neighborhoods, I help increase the value of these neighborhoods. I bring tax revenue to the city, all positive improvements to our city. All these and more, not requesting a single dime from the city's neighborhood grant funds. This same intention I have with these lots to bring value and tax revenue to our city, as pictures proved, I have started prepping the lots already. Another note, 510 Fifth Street, Green Bay West Side. Under my ownership approximately 10 years ago, and I sold that property a few years ago, but approximately 10 years ago, I received a most beautifying, beautifying award letter from the mayor. Mr. Alderman further demeaningly expressed to let me set an example and send a message to all other citizens. You are correct. Let my example send a message clear and loud to all city, all city government officials that we don't conduct ourselves in condescending, intimidating manners towards our citizens, any citizens. Let me serve as an example that I am one of the few citizens who brings tax revenue to the city and improve established neighborhoods value where majority of citizens don't want to touch. In summary, my city officials and city staffs not only fail me once, but fail me twice as a hefty taxpaying citizen. First, issued invoices with Wisconsin statute clearly mandates mail notices be sent, mailed on June 6, deadline seven day, which were put it on June 13th. This is state statute. City went out to cut on June 10th. Postmark date is the only controlled factors here, while all others or any others can err. We as citizens, city government, city staffs, we are ruled by state statute, not by what we want or what our opinion is. We have a standard to meet in the standards that state statute. Second, fail me as a citizen is to be treated further with humiliation, intimidation, condescending, demeaning, disrespectful, embarrassment by other, no other than my city government official who belongs to the citizen. Therefore, please look at the overall picture. Grant flexibilities to productive law-abiding citizens who work seven days a week to bring values to our neighbors, tax revenue to our city, help paint an impression of citizens and city government on a win-win situation to citizens like myself by receding, rescinding these two invoices. But most importantly, be role models that we all follow state statutes, not by opinions. Last but not least, I thank you to the other three aldermen, and I praise them that on the INS committee last Wednesday for exemplifying what a city government should be like. You know who you are. We all know who they are. All you three conducted yourself professionally, respectfully, neutral, without any preconceived judgment. I applaud and I praise all three of you. You are what drives citizens as myself not to lose hope in my city government. And I have confidence that majority of my city government officials, such as majority of you sitting here that I've seen, are such like those three. I as well want to thank you to the other aldermen, aldermen who conducted himself unprofessionally and treated me condescendingly. You show me that there's so much more work to be done with our city government in our community that's only becoming more diverse every day. As quoted by Saudi, and I quote, it is wrong to follow the advice of an adversary 
Nevertheless, it is right to hear it that you may do the contrary. And this is the essence of good policy, unquote. Thank you for your time. Thank you, ma'am, for being here and offering your testimony tonight. <clears throat> I'll entertain a motion to close the floor. Uh, motion made by Alder from the 7th. Second. Seconded by Alder from the 3rd to close the floor. We're going to go to Director Grenier here for some background. Well, the background is that, uh, <clears throat> as Ms. Moore stated, uh, we received a complaint. Uh, staff went out to investigate, discovered that the vegetation, un unmanaged growth on the two parcels immediately adjacent to each other uh, on Pine Terrace was in excess of two feet tall. That's well in excess of the nine inch maximum that's allowed under uh, city ordinance. The acting street supervisor did indeed handwrite the letters. Um, letters were sent over here to, uh, came by inner office mail to Department of Public Works where the envelopes were stuffed and sent down to the mail room. I can't tell you why the discrepancy between uh, the date of the letter and the date that it was, uh, that the postage shows on the envelopes. Um, we have nothing further to go by except the date that the letters were sent out from our office, which in this case was May 29th. Uh, we went back, did a recheck on June 5th, found that it was not uh, mown down in accordance with the statutes, uh, waited until June 10th, went out and did complete the cutting. Attorney Chavez. Yes, Mayor, so we looked into this and um, the obligation to provide notice is seven days under our, under our ordinance. Um, the, the, the rules when it comes to mailing are the generally that the mailing is effective of the, as of the day that you put it into the mail. Um, I agree that our our staff did what they what they believed because they, it was their thought that they had actually put it into the mail on the day that they issued the letter. However, unless we have the um, we usually can add three days to the mailing and consider it adequate. But in this case, we have a post stamp showing that it, or postage date showing that it wasn't actually um, mailed until that date for whatever reason. And based on that, I would say we did not provide adequate notice. Thank you. We did not provide adequate notice. We did not provide adequate notice. Alder from the third. What? Did you have a question? I'm sorry. Who had the floor? I do now. Well, could you just repeat to that why we didn't have um, um, adequate, notice. adequate notice? What was that again? Sure. We're supposed to provide seven days notice. When you are mailing something by statute, um, the time it can be calculated in a couple different ways. One is you add three days from the date of mailing. The second is you base it off of the day that it's actually mailed. In this instance, our staff did everything they were supposed to because they sent it out and the day that they believed that they, they sent it out was the day that they should have been acting on. But the day that we actually got it into the mail is the day that starts the time. And, and so- When was the day we acted on? How many days after? It was, it, if we cut the grass on the 10th, the, the letter was sent out on the 6th. Okay, so. Then what you're stating. Thank you, Mayor. from the 9th. Thank you, Mayor. Um, this was sort of the discussion that had occurred at the committee level. Um, I don't think that Ms. Mua is disputing at all the fact that the lawn is overgrown. She acknowledges it was an oversight. And so I, I don't think that it's necessary for us to spend a lot of time debating um, the merits about how a property should be maintained. However, I think the debate uh, is a legal one, which is what I discussed at INS. And specifically, the city did not meet its burden as defined by state statute, uh, which is why at the committee level, I was in favor of rescinding um, the full amount. And I believe the committee, um, I didn't get a second on that one, we, and the committee ultimately settled on, on splitting it. Uh, but again, recognizing that we did not meet our burden, even though I also want to acknowledge that staff did feel they they acted on this appropriately so it's clearly a misunderstanding here and because of that i would make a motion that we rescind the full amount second. motion made by alder from the ninth seconded by alder from the first to rescind that amount any further comments 
Uh, Alder from the 12th. Yes, uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, I just want to note that I'm going to be abstaining from the vote. I'm personally acquainted with, uh, with Ms. Mula and the family. Thank you. Very good. Thanks, Alder. All in favor of the motion will signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, signify by saying no. The motion passes. On to item O, report of the Protection and Policy Committee. Second. Motion made by Alder from the 7th, seconded by Alder from the 3rd to approve report O, which is the report of the Protection and Policy Committee from the meeting on August 12, 2019. Any items under this report you wish to handle separately? Any items to handle separately? Hearing none, all in favor of approving that report, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, nay. The ayes have it. The report has been approved. Item P, report of the Protection and Policy Committee approved. granting operator licenses. Motion made by Alder from the 7th, seconded by Alder from the 5th to approve report P, which is the report of the Protection and Policy Committee granting operator licenses. Any names for which you'd like to be recorded as abstaining? Any names under this report you wish to handle separately? Hearing none, all in favor of the report, please signify by saying aye. aye. Those opposed, nay. The ayes have it. The report has been approved. Item Q, report of the Plan Commission, August 12, 2019. What are your wishes regarding this report? A motion made by Alder from the 1st, seconded by Alder from the 10th to approve report Q, which is the report of the Plan Commission from the meeting on August 12, 2019. Any items under this report you wish to handle separately? Hearing none, all in favor of approving that report, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, nay. The ayes have it. The report has been approved. On item R, report of the Public Arts Commission. Uh, motion to approve. Motion made by Alder from the 7th. Second. Seconded by Alder from the 4th to approve report R, which is the report of the Public Arts Commission from the meeting on July 31st, 2019. Any items you wish to handle separately? Number five. Item number 5. Any other items? Item 5 will be handled separately. Hearing none others, all in favor of approving the remainder of that report, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, nay. The ayes have it. The report has been approved with the exception of item 5. What are your wishes regarding item 5? Motion made by Alder from the 7th. Second. Seconded by Alder from the 1st. Item was pulled by Alder from the 8th. You have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I brought this up because it's been a long saga that we've dealt with at the council and in the public, and I, I'm fine with what the committee did once it was explained to me. I was wondering if uh, Alder Scannell, who serves on that committee, could explain it just for the public record that this isn't going away. We're not forgetting about that memorial. We're just following a, a certain process. And so Very I good. defer to Alder Scannell. Thank you. Alder from the seventh. Yep. Thank you. Uh, thank you for the chance to go public with this. Yes. Um, the reason we're not going forward now is because we just don't have enough background information to send out an RFP. We wouldn't have enough uh, information as to what uh, we're looking for, where it's going to go. It's going to be inside, outside. It's going to be with the new public safety building, which has been commonly discussed. So we just need more time to work out on some of these background details before we can go forward. Uh, at the time, I was also, we were not also aware that we had uh, any money for this, but there is money from the RDA. Right here. Potentially. Potentially. Oh, well, okay. Anyway, we'd have to secure where that money's going to be coming from and how much we're talking about. So all these details need to get worked out. So in time, stay tuned. But for now, we're just receiving a place on file. Thank you. Very good. Great. Seeing no other requests to speak, all in favor of the motion, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, nay. The ayes have it. Item has been approved. Item S, report of the Traffic, Bicycle, and Pedestrian Commission, July 15, 2019. Motion made by Alder from the 5th, seconded by Alder from the 7th to approve Report S, which is the report of the Traffic, Bicycle, and Pedestrian Commission from the meeting on July 15, 2019. Any items under this report you wish to handle separately? Any items? Hearing none, all in favor of approving that report, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, nay. The ayes have it. The report has been approved. Item T, report of the Economic Development Authority, August 12, 2019. Motion made by Alder from the 7th. Seconded by Alder from the 1st to approve Report T, which is the report of the Economic Development Authority from the meeting on August 12th, 2019. Any items under this report you wish to handle separately? Hearing none, all in favor of approving that report, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, nay. The ayes have it. The report has been approved. Item U, report of the Sustainability Commission, August 14, 2019. Motion made by Alder from the 7th. 
Seconded by Alder from the 5th to approve Report U, which is the report of the Sustainability Commission from the meeting on August 14, 2019. Any items under this report you wish to handle separately? One. Item 1. Item 1 will be handled separately. Hearing none others, all in favor of approving the remainder of that report, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, nay. The ayes have it, and the report has been approved with the exception of item 1. Your wishes regarding item 1. Motion approved. Motion made by Alder from the 7th. Seconded by Alder from the 4th. The item was pulled by the Alder from the 9th. You have the floor. Thank you, Mayor. Um, there were no uh, attachments or documents associated with this particular item, and unfortunately, I don't know who the staff person is that is responsible for Sustainability Commission. <laughs> Celestine, mm -hmm. okay. Uh, Celestine, just a couple of questions. Uh, this $15,000 is coming from excess stadium tax dollars. Was that funding that was previously allocated to the Sustainability Commission? Previously no. allocated to, sorry, thank you, Mayor. Previously allocated to Eland Electric. And so the, to make it cleaner, the uh, report piece should really read to approve the installation of EV chargers at Light Park. So um, $60,000 was awarded to Eland Electric from the excess stadium tax funds, and that was to do various sustainability solar projects around town. And so they came to sustainability, they spoke with um, Seth Hoffmeister, and I believe also Ned Dorf, who are the chair and vice chair, um, to basically say, hey, we've got this money, we need to spend it. Would you be interested in looking at some of the projects that we would like to do in the city? So that's what number one and number two are. Thank you for that. Um, unfortunately, I, uh, because there wasn't any documentation, I just didn't have an opportunity to review the video footage on this. Could you maybe give some background as far as the discussion about why Light Park was chosen above any other site? Sure. Because there are already um, some solar panels there. Uh, actually, Dan and I were having, Director Ditchett and I were having a discussion about that. Those solar panels, um, they actually move, which are really great, but they need to be fixed. Um, so that's why number two is to sort of look at, look to see essentially what all the projects could look like, which would include potentially installing um, EV charger, uh, also doing roof solar panels on some city owned buildings, but that requires a little bit of work, and then also fixing the solar array at Light Park. Okay, uh, thank you for the explanation. I'm not necessarily uh, interested in micromanaging the location, but I guess something that just did come to mind for me, and I don't know if it was something that was considered by the commission, um, and it's, again, because I wasn't there, I didn't have the ability to provide this input, or, with the shipyard being under construction, <laughs> would it possibly be more affordable to install one of these on a site that doesn't have to be repurposed? Okay. So it doesn't plug into the solar panels. So that's the idea. Okay. Well, then I guess that, that answers my question. Thank you. Good. Ms. Jeffries. Thank you. It does not, um, you know, the idea of installing an EV charger station at um, uh, the shipyard development is a great idea, and I think something the commission would like to look into. But as Alder Scannell said, the connection is with the solar panels that are already existing at Light Park. And I think that we should be thinking about lots of different places where we could put EV charges, especially for visitors to our community. Thank you. Alder from the ninth. And, and, and thank you for that explanation, Celestine. And just one more point, maybe to make it clear why I was perhaps suggesting ship air as an alternative. Uh, when I think of electric vehicles that you have to plug in and charge, typically there's a wait time. Uh, the shipyard location would actually have things for people to do while they waited as opposed to like park which is just a little bit different so that's kind of why i was prying but given your explanation um i i would support approval thank you okay and we would entertain a motion to approve the installation rather than to fund motion made by alder from the seventh seconded by alder from the sixth to amend To approve the installation. All in favor of the amendment, please signify by saying aye. aye. Those opposed, nay. I think so. Right? Entertain a motion. Motion to approve as amended. Um, motion made by Alder from the seventh, seconded by Alder from the third. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. aye. Those opposed, nay. 
You guys have it? Item has been approved. On to V, report of the personnel committee. Approved. Motion made by Alder from the 7th, seconded by Alder from the 1st to approve report V, which is report of the personnel committee from the meeting on August 13, 2019. Motion made by Alder from the 7th, seconded by Alder from the 6th. Can you read? The Common Council may convene in closed session pursuant to subsection, uh, section 19.8, boy, this is, uh, 85, subsection 1, subsection E, Wisconsin statutes, for purpose of deliberating or negotiating public employee contracts for competitive or bargaining reasons. The Common Council may thereafter reconvene an open session pursuant to the Chapter 19.85, Subsection 2, Wisconsin Statutes, to report the results of the closed session and consider the balance of the agenda. All right, we're going to use the board here. So the motion passes seven three. So we'll do that when we get back. Okay. <laughs> Randy, can you just say? Hi. Hi. <laughs> we are close. Motion to return to regular business. Motion made by Alder from the seventh, seconded by Alder from the tenth, to return to regular business. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, nay. I'll now entertain a motion to uh, approve the report of the personnel committee. Motion made by Alder from the third, seconded by Alder from the tenth. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, nay. The ayes have it, and we're on to receive and place on file municipal court report for July 2019. So moved. Motion made by Alder from the 7th, seconded by Alder from the 1st. <coughs> All in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, nay. <coughs> the item has been adopted. We're on to item X, resolutions. <coughs> you may enter suspension of the rules, adopt resolutions 1 through 7 together with one roll call vote. Suspend. Second. Motion made to suspend the rules, made by Alder from the 7th, seconded by Alder from the 1st. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, nay. The ayes have it. The rules have been suspended. To adopt. Motion made by Alder from the 7th, seconded by Alder from the 1st, to adopt resolutions 1 through 7. Please use the board. So I don't know how I should do this. Um, I, I vote yes on the remaining six, but I want to be marked as abstaining on resolution one. On one? Uh, through employment, I'm connected. Thank you. So noted. Item is approved 11-0. On to item Y, ordinances, first reading. You may under suspension of the rules advance ordinances one through seven to a second reading. Well, all in favor, please signify. Uh, motion made by Alder from the seventh, seconded by Alder from the first. Uh, all, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Who's opposed to it? <laughs> yep, Alder from the tenth. All right. We have a citizen who would like uh, uh, Director Bonk, if you could uh, just speak on number six. Just. He has some questions, but I, if you could just kind of give a just a brief description. Director Vonk. Thank you. Uh, number six, uh, you're referring to proposed rezoning of the shipyard area. 
Okay, so uh, what we have done, this is basically following through um, with our shipyard investment strategy, uh, looking at um, land uses in the area. One of the things that we would like to do is um, clean up and make more consistent the zoning in the district. If you see the map that was included, and this is back in the plan commission report, um, page 301, uh, you can see there's a lot of um, different types of zoning categories and a lot of uh, zoning that maybe only encompasses one or two parcels um, and really doesn't in a number of ways match the actual uses that are going on there or uh, with the intended future uses uh, based on based on that strategy. Uh, so with that, um, we are proposing uh, narrowing down the number of zoning districts um, and then also um, making them more consistent uh, throughout the district really to reflect again what's there and what are some of the desired uses in the future. Uh, in the packet, also page 303, we basically listed all the parcels that will be affected. Um, and in most cases, um, there's no change in terms of the uses that are there would be continued uh, to, to be, um, those uses would be permitted in the future. Um, a number uh, of places we've actually relaxed and, and places that need a CUP um, will be actually going to permitted uses. Um, there are two parcels uh, that will go from a CUP to not permitted uses. Um, but with that, that it only involves um, instances uh, where there is a discontinuance of use for over a year. Um, so if you don't use it for a year and it becomes vacant um, and you want to come back and, and use it again, you can't. Um, or there's a request to increase the use by over 50%. Um, but other than that, the, the properties, the uses that they have now will be grandfathered in and continued to operate as, as usual um, so that nobody's going to be forced to be make any changes based on the zoning. Uh, it basically just deals with, with future, um, future land use for, for this district. So with that, um, we just want to make sure that the, the change um, really impacted parcels in the most minimal way, uh, and if anything, provided a, a positive benefit. Um, really the ones that, that won't be permitted, it's um, the two parcels. One is going from an R3, or one's going from R3 to C1, and the other one's going from OR to C1. Uh, and basically it's just saying on, on these parcels in the future, um, there's residential uses there now. We'd like to see commercial uses in the future. Um, that's kind of a gist of, of what we're doing. Uh, it, it fits in. This is the, the first reading. We'll come back for a, a final reading and adoption at the meeting in September. Great. Any further questions? <clears throat> Very good. All right, and I'll entertain a motion to advance ordinances one through seven to a second reading. Second. Motion made by Alder from the seventh, second by Alder from the third. All in favor of the motion, please signify by... Oh, please... Please signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, nay. The ayes have it. The ordinances have been advanced to a second reading. Now on to referral and petitions, referral of petitions and communications. Alder from the sixth. I have three here. They're pretty much with the parks. Um, the first one, Parks Forestry. As I have noticed, dead trees in downtown area, specifically the 100 block of North Adams, plus there's other areas, I'd like to know why they're still there. It's been over a year. We have a nice, new, beautiful hotel, destination hotel, and I think it's kind of, you come and you walk downtown, you're seeing all kinds of dead trees. Doesn't, uh, doesn't put a good spin on the city. So I'd like to know why they're still there. Um, Second one is the park board uh, requests the wildlife sanctuary reinstate the deer management program. The herd needs calling. Um, next Can we one include is the geese in that as well? <laughs> hmm. Yeah, they the geese were really yeah. This year I couldn't believe how many young survived and everything. Anyway, okay. DPW East Side Yard Waste on East Shore Drive. The gate is left open during the winter, and I don't think it's always closed uh, even during the summer at the appropriate time. And this again would relate to the deer problem for the residents along East Shore Drive. Thank you. Thanks, Alder. Alder from the third. Thank you, Mayor. 
One late communication, review the Green Bay Economic Department policy at 1449 Morrill Street Business with possible action. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Alder from the 12th. Uh, thank you, Mayor. I have three, and if I could ask Ms. Chavez to let me know which committee it, this should go to, I think there's some gray area. First one is discussion, discussion with possible action on loosening the restrictions and requirements of paved driveways on residential lots to alleviate flooding issues. The INS, perhaps? Sure. INS. <laughs> we'll start there. We can always. Uh, second one, discussion with possible action on making changes to alleviate parking concerns at the Resch Aquatic Center. I want to say start so it parks. Bernier would like it to go to traffic. Traffic. Okay, that was my second choice. Thank you. And then thirdly, discussion with possible action on amending the city's ordinance on landscaping, weeds, vegetation, and gardens on residential lots. Inez. Inez, I thought so. All right, thank you. Any others? Alder from the fourth. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, first one, I think this is going to go to finance because it has to go to, I think it should go to IT. I'd like the police department to work with uh, IT to set up a system on the city's request for service icon for citizens to report problems and request service from the police department. And then for INS, DPW to develop better systems to better and more quickly respond during natural and man-made disasters. Thank you. Any others? On to adjournment. Motion made by Alder from the seventh, seconded by Alder from the third to accept the late communications. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, nay. They are accepted. Motion made by Alder from the seventh, seconded by Alder from the third. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, nay. The ayes have it, we're adjourned.